welcome to the second lecture of anatomy lecture series today we are going to discuss about brachial plexus first of all i would like to mention that this lecture series gives you an overview about different topics in anatomy let's start the lecture this is brachial plexus five roots contribute to the formation of the brachial plexus for the upper limb which are the fibers in anterior rami of C5 to C8 and T1 roots. About 10% of plexuses are prefixed. That means it is formed by C4 to C8 and 10% are postfixed. That means the brachial plexus is formed by the union of C6 to T2 roots. Main components of the brachial plexus are roots, trunks, divisions, cords and terminal branches. Now I am drawing the roots of brachial plexus C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. C means cervical and T means thoracic. Upper two roots and lower two roots combine and form the trunks. C7 root along involve the formation of a trunk so these blue color lines are trunks there are three trunks superior middle and inferior superior trunk is formed by the union of c5 to c5 and c6 roots and middle trunk is formed by c7 alone and inferior trunk is formed by the union of c8 and t1 roots each trunk is divided into anterior and posterior divisions. Black colored lines are anterior divisions and yellow colored lines are posterior divisions. These are the anterior and posterior divisions of superior trunk. This anterior division, this is posterior division of middle trunk. This is the anterior division of inferior trunk and this is the posterior division. Then the anterior divisions of superior and middle trunks are combined and form the lateral cord of the brachial plexus. And all three posterior divisions of all three trunks are united and form the posterior cord of brachial plexus. And lastly, the uh, anterior division of inferior trunk along involve the formation of medial cord of brachial plexus. Now I am labeling the divisions and now I am labeling the cords. Next part of the brachial plexus is terminal branches. From lateral cord there are two terminal branches musculocutaneous and lateral root of median nerve. From posterior cord axillary artery and radial artery are the terminal branches. From medial cord, ulnar nerve and medial root of the median nerve are the terminal branches. The lateral root of median nerve and the medial root of the median nerve combine and form the median nerve. Carefully look the labeling of branches. This is lateral root of median nerve. This is Medial root of median nerve. Those two nerves are combined and form the median nerve. This is axillary nerve. This is the radial nerve. The ulna nerve. This is musculocutaneous nerve. I label it again. This is the median nerve. This is the general structure of the brachial plexus. Keep in mind, this is very important part when you are handling clinical cases. The roots of the brachial plexus are between the scalene muscles and the trunks in the posterior triangle. The divisions be are behind the clavicle and the cords arranged around the second part of the axillary artery. Let's see the branches arise from the brachial plexus. This is dorsal scapular nerve or nerve to rhomboids which arises from the C5 root. 
This nerve runs down deep to the levator scapulae and the two rhomboids, supplying all three muscles. This is nerve to subclavius, rises from in between C5 and C6 roots. The next nerve is long thoracic nerve, which arises from C5, C6, C7 nerve roots. It forms on the first digitation of serratus anterior muscle and runs downwards just behind the mid axillary line deep to the fascia over the muscle. So these are three nerves arise from the roots. Let's see the branches arise from the trunks. Suprascapular nerve is the only nerve arises from the trunk, which is, which is arise from the upper trunk of the brachial plexus. The suprascapular nerve supplies supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and the shoulder and acromioclavicular joints. Next, we'll see the branches of the lateral cord. First nerve is the lateral pectoral nerve. The lateral pectoral nerve passes through the clavipectoral fascia and supplies the upper fibers of pectoralis major muscle. Other two branches of the lateral cord are the musculocutaneous nerve and the lateral root of the median nerve. Musculocutaneous nerve supplies the coracobrachialis, biceps and the brachialis. The lateral root of the median nerve is joined by the median root at the lateral side of the axillary artery to form the main nerve. The musculocutaneous nerve supplies coracobrachialis and tears it and then go in between the biceps and brachialis muscle. Later, emerge at the lateral board of the biceps tendon and pierce the deep fascia and continue as lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. You will learn about this nerve again when, you, when we are discussing the forearm. From the posterior cord of the brachial plexus, there are three branches, upper and lower subscapular nerves, and the thoracodosal nerve. So these are the upper and lower subscapular nerves and in between these two nerves the thoracodosal nerve arises and it supplies to latissimus dorsi muscle. So this is the thoracodosal nerve. Axillary nerve and the radi radial nerve are the terminal branches arise from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. This nerve is median root of the median nerve. There are five branches arise from the medial cord. This is the medial root of the median nerve which combine with the rattler root of the median nerve and form the median nerve. This nerve branch is the medial pectoral nerve. It supplies the pectoralis minor and then pierce it and supply the lower fibers of pectoralis major muscle. This nerve is the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm. It is the smallest branch of the brachial plexus. And this is the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. It is much bigger now than the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm. The last branch arises from the medial cord is ulna, which is the direct continuation of the medial cord with additional C7 fibers. This is the end of the lecture. I have provided an overview of the brachial plexus. You should practice this diagram several times. Then try to read and understand the additional things about brachial plexus. Thank you very much for listening. We'll meet again with the next lecture.